Okay, so what we're going to do is just we're just going to add a basic tile map. Okay. Now, how you provide the data for the tile map, there's millions of ways of doing it, but I'm going to show you a super basic way, which is to just specify an array, which is nice because you can actually then procedurally generate that array. Okay. Right. So we don't want to be doing this in title mode. We want to be doing this in the game. So we're, we've got the title. Let's just recap where we're at with it. So the title screen comes up and then we press one and we go into the game. Obviously, you don't have to have it like that. You can do it a million different ways. Um, but if I get this built first, then it'll be quicker the next time. Right. So when we go here, this is where we want the map making. So that's going to be in the game setup constructor. So if we go to the game setup code, here's the constructor for it. So at the minute, all we do is we put the logic in to let us quit and to draw the thing on the screen. So after we've set this up, we're going to change the background color. Um, so we do that by saying screen color. If you've got a rough idea of what it might have been called, start typing it and it will come up because I did try and be sensible when I named everything. Um, so I'm going to go for, uh, I'm going to set it back to, to uh, now I'm going to make sure I set it to grey. I know it was grey on the other screen, but don't assume you never make any assumptions. So I'm going to set that to that. And then I want to create this tile map. Okay. So I'm going to get some help from Visual Studio. So I'm going to say tile map T. I don't, I don't want this reference and I'll show you what else I'm going to do in a sec. And I'm just going to say new um, level. Capital L for a class name. And I'm just going to do a, an empty constructor thing for it. And then let's give it a name and then I'll force it to do some more work. So like beginning. I don't know why I said it in that voice. but It's because I'm a lunatic, basically. Right. So that doesn't exist. And it's we know that because we've just made the name up. So I'm going to do quick actions. And I'm going to say generate class. And it gives you a little preview so you can see, oh, yeah, OK. It looks like it inherits properly from Tarmap. So we do that. Right now, what I'm going to do now, I've got that to do that work for me. I'm going to delete that and this will now error. And I'm going to say, right, OK, let's right click over that as well. Or you can click on show potential fixes, which brings that up. And I'm going to generate the field so it will make me a reference to it up here. T is a really poor name. So if we ever want to rename something, rename it where it's defined so if i call this active level or something like that and then what you must do is say control dot and say rename and it'll do all the references for you okay that's the best way to do it right so let's go to this level code it's going to have problems because it's only included the game engine and we want loads of other stuff in there otherwise we won't be able to dot type and things in so we're just going to say right okay let's take all these other things and stick them at the top if i go on game set wait now it's over there because i haven't edited it it's put it in um a preview box so you might from time to time go where's it gone as soon as we edit it it should flick over to the other side and it's now anchored okay but you can always just if anything ever goes if you lose all your windows remember let's do a save lose all your windows you've only got a and you lose solution explorer and team explorer and all these other cruddy things i didn't want those on anyway just got to go back to the view menu and pull them up right and then just load them up again you haven't lost them they're just not open right okay so a tile map Tile map is basically a specific drawing system that expects things in a grid. Um, so the way that I, the coding for this goes, I can take efficiencies into account when I'm drawing that grid. So it, you can draw quite big things made out of lots of bits quite quick. And it's got advantages that they're all fixed so you can scroll them around and mess about. Okay, so in the constructor 
what we're, we've got to do is, we, the first thing we've got to do is add it to the manager of the tile maps, which is the tile map manager. So we say add this, just like you do with the sprite. So we're just saying, right, oh, you've got a reference to this now. You know it exists. When you get asked to draw stuff, you've got something to draw. Okay. We've got to set up the size of the map. So I can't remember what it's called, so I'm going to put this dot so I get all the time maps. And I think it's set map or something like that. Set map. I think it's set map. Right. So it's got three parameters. How wide a tile is. So that's in pixels. So this is what I was saying. So um, let's just... I don't know, let's make it 40 and then 40 high. You can do tile maps of different widths and heights, but in general, you want them all to be the same. Then you have to provide an array. And you can see it's uh, an array of integers. A tile map is just basically numbers, tile numbers. Okay, so I haven't got that map yet. So what I'm going to say is... I'm going to come up with, um, I don't know what to call this, level map. I'm going to call it level map. It doesn't exist. Okay, so that's now going to create that for me. Generate, not a method, I want um, a field. He's having a guess at what it was. Um, it could be a method because it could be something that returns a 2D array. So it depends how you want to do it. But I'm just going to do this one. So it'll create that up here for me. And then I'm going to initialize that. Right, so the only other basic thing I need to do is to define tiles. So I'm going to do this by creating a separate routine. So I'm just going to have a subroutine to do this. So I'm just going to get it to generate. So control full stop is the quick way of bringing that generate thing up. And it's created that for me there. And I think it's called tile list. My tile list, there it is. So this, if you want to know what data type something, it just float your mouse back over. So this is a, a linked list of tiles. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create that linked list. Um, and I can do it using an initializer. And you'll see that I do the array the same way. So I'm going to say new tile there are loads of ways of creating tiles you can make an empty one but we want to specify um, a texture I wish it wouldn't jump around like that we're going to specify a texture let's jump where's it going over there where's it going over there uh, a texture in a rectangle because you're going to have like your sprite sheet your graphic and you're going to say right well it's that texture but I want that bit is tile number naught and everything all right but I haven't got any so what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify one of the pre-built textures, which is text dot, and then there's um, a 50 by 50 rectangle. So the process is the same here. Let's just get rid of that so it's out of the way. Um, so I'm going to say, right, well, that's the texture, but I only want 40 by 40 of it. So I'm going to say new rectangle, 40 by 40. Um, and then... That's white, so what I can actually do is I can apply a color wash as well. So I can say color, and let's make the background one, let's make that black. So color tile note is gonna be black. Oh, I've cut the um, rectangle up. I wanna go from, I've got to specify top left corner, then I've got to specify the width and height. If I'd have been looking, you can see it says X, Y, width, height, and it tells you what each one of them is. Um, Okay, then I'm going to put a comma because I want to create another tile. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. And the only thing that's going to be different with these test tiles is the color. So I'm going to use the same image, but I'm going to color it. So um, let's make it white. I've done something wrong here. Hang on. Oh, because I haven't done new list of tile I don't know that okay I said I can't remember anything <laughs> um, right so 
that's created two tiles. So I can use number zero. And what I am um, trying to get the students to do is to just put a comment at the end of each one of these lines and say, well, that's that's actually zero. When you know what zero represents, so if that's like floor or back or wall. So I'm going to call that, I'm just going to call that floor. It depends what your tile map represents. If it's an overhead maze, is yours an overhead one? Yeah, it is. You're looking down, aren't you? Yeah. So, yeah, tiles are going to be floors or walls and doors or whatever they are. So this is going to be like a, a wall. So just, just for my reference. And what you can do is make some constants. So I'm going to say constant floor equals zero. Oh, got to tell it it's an integer. I haven't done any C sharp for ages. Um, wall equals one. So I can use those values, but I won't. I won't do that for now. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define this level map. So I'm going to say, and it's a 2D array. So this is how you declare a 2D array. So I've got braces to say right, it's coming up, and then I have a brace to say this is the first row of that map. So the nice thing is the game engine, when you set this map up on, it's not gonna be pointing on a video, is it? Um, when I set the map up here, it will examine that and say, right, well, that's how wide it is, that's how tall. So you can make it as big as you want. So let's go um, wall. Oh, let's just do a wall around the outside. I don't know how many that is. It doesn't matter. Right, so I'm going to copy that and make the bottom wall. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste that in, but I want to change all these to zeros. You really should make it regular because what it'll do, it doesn't have to be, but what it'll do is it'll look for the widest one and it'll say that's the width of the whole thing. Um, and then the others will be undefined. I can't remember whether it crashes or not. I can't remember whether I bothered to check. I think I probably just failed silently. Right, so I'm just going to add some more in. So we've got we've got a big arena or something. Now theoretically, that is all we've got to do. So if I run this, so I've, I've specified the map. So this map could be read in from a file, which is what you do is you you get a level generator and then you provide it with the data. So the only data I provided this with was a name but I could have provided it with a file name and I could have said um, I think the command set map from file and it reads it in okay but I can show you that in another video so let's just let's just see if this works and I'll find out it doesn't <laughs> right so we go to the game show. oh it did it worked something worked I did something it worked so you can see it's quite chunky um, but what's currently happening is um, it's sat in the top left hand corner of the screen. You can reposition things, but actually I'll, my map's going to be bigger than this anyway. So I'm just going to make this wider. I'm just going to put a few zeros in here. Not that many. All right, so I've got to make sure these all match up. So I'm just going to blitz all those off. And I want that to match the bottom one. So I'm just going to do that. So let's add um, another tile. Uh, tile number two, which is going to be geezer. So what you can do is you can have definitions in the map that are tiles, but also you can use them as markers for where you want sprites to appear. So that's what I'm gonna, so we'll have a geezer and we'll have a bloke. So three is gonna be a bloke. I should have kept that bloke I made the other day. So we're gonna have a geezer and a bloke. All right, so the geezer is gonna be cyan because that's a disgusting color and the bloke is going to be the equally disgusting magenta. It's not even a nice name, is it? Magenta. You have to say it in like an Essex accent. It's really strange. It's one of those like forced Essex accent colours. 
that you do get. And magenta is one of them. Um, right, so I've got four now. So I'm going to put... Um, initially, so the tile map's going to render that for me so I can see where it sits. Um, and I'm going to put... So geezer's at that position. And I'll, I'll just put it... I, I could have multiple blokes. So I'm going to have multiple blokes. Right, let's run that. So what's nice is you can get some up. You see, you, if you've got a layout and you're you're playing with a, some sketches and you're like, what's it look like? There you go. So it doesn't fill the screen completely, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because what you might want to do is you might want to put some info at the bottom. Um, you can overlay things, so it doesn't. I like that text is over the top. All right. Now the map's gone off the screen, so I can't see the whole map now. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn. We're going to, I'm going to build a temporary controller that's going to let me move the map around. Okay, so in the constructor, I'm just going to say, um, I'm going to create an event. So just like I did um, the other day, so I'm going to say gm dot event manager dot uh, add event. Uh, I'm going to dummy controller. So you might want things like this when you like debugging and you so you don't want to the key thing to this project is that you don't start building loads of things at once you build one thing test it and then you can document do all the documentation so i've tried this that was a bit messed up i had to rejig this okay so it's important that we like say right well some of the code that we write is just going to be for testing purposes so we're going to say new event and this is an equivalent uh and we're going to run it at the maximum rate. I don't know. I don't know why mine's not coming up with a picker properly. That used to be a, an old bug. That. Uh, so we want maximum rate. So the first number is the speed. So it it tells you that. In this, so you've got like number of seconds or fraction of second. What debug name we want? So this is our debug tile scroll. And then, so we just want um, debugging controls. I'm going to call it debug controls. I'll put my semicolon at the end. Right, so I've now got two things that don't exist. So it's got two errors. So let's right click over that and say quick actions and generate the field. So it's created my controller for me. That's important because I'll need to delete it when I kill the tile map. I now need to create this method. So I'm going to generate that method. And it's created it for me. So this is just going to have some key code. The other thing I need to do, so I'm going to put some key code in. I'm just going to say egm dot engine manager, and I'm not going to scroll the tile map. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to move the viewport. But I've got to do one more thing before that will work properly. But I want to show you it. So when you do it yourself, you go, it's not working, so that you've got some idea. Right, so you get to the default viewport by saying engine manager dot view, and then you can access the X position. So where is the viewport centered? Okay, so I'm just going to say oh, I wanted the input manager there. Let's dump that on the next line. I want the input manager. So I'm just going to do when I do the left and right keys, that's all I'm going to do. So key down, keys dot left. Oh, let's do right first, because that's what I want to do. So right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this code. And I'm going to say plus equals. And again, we want it to be pixels per second. So we're just going to, and you'll get used to doing this. Event manager dot delta. So you just say, take the delta. It's the same thing if you're messing about with unity. You have to ask for the delta all the time. To get any proper movement I and mean, let's scroll it at 100 pixels per second because that's a, a reasonable amount of time so we'll test it this works so let's run that and it shouldn't work so i'm going to go to the game so i'm pressing the key and it's not doing anything so i think right okay well did i write the code properly that looks reasonable we'll probably find out it's not in a minute um 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some debug information on. So I'm just going to say, right, while I'm in here, I'm, let's turn the debugger on. So let's do gm.enginemanager dot debug now I'm messing about with tarmac so I want to know about the tarmac stuff so let's have debug dot tarmac no not tarmac over tile map there's loads of things you can do you can actually get it to I'll do the tarmac overlay as well actually uh, oh we'll do that in a minute right so that's going to give me information about the tarmac when it's on the screen which I can't see because it's in white <laughs> ah, right if I oh we should be able to see it. Mm. right so if you look at this the third line down says the resolution is 800 by 600 that's the window size but it also says the world is 800 by 600 so by default the limits to the world are the same as the screen size well, we've made a world that's bigger so what we need to do is tell the engine that actually the world's got bigger so after we've set the map you mustn't do it before because the dimensions aren't known so we're going to say gm dot engine manager dot world size and it wants a rectangle it, it only actually wants the width and height, but there are a couple of, there's three ways of specifying this, but um, what I can do is I can say this dot, and I think there's something called area. There it is, area. Look, I put comments in so you can see it gets the area of the tile map. Um, so if I say uh, area, it should get that size. Now, what you, if you do, one thing that you're going to come across, if you start scrolling the viewport, and you set the world area when you go back to the title screen you'll need to make sure that you reset those things because you'll find that the title screen is not on the screen but it is because it's just not being shown because the world's bigger and you've scrolled it so you'll get weird artifacts like that right so we set the world area so the the engine knows the world is bigger now i couldn't see the tile map information so you can change i could change the color of the tiles but i don't want to do that um, so what I want to do is change the debug attributes so I can look at the color and I don't know what a good color would be maybe gray what's going to stand out on gray and black uh, on black and white I'll try gray right so let's run that and hopefully we'll see the um, time up information right so you can see the time up information there and it's telling me how big it is. It's telling me the X and Y position. Oh, it wasn't that much wider than the world. By default, it clamps. So you can't move the view outside of the world. I need to put the left key in. I thought I'd made it wider than that. But um, so let's just copy paste that. And change it to left. So this is just going to help you looking at the layout of everything. So I'll just, yeah, it's not very wide. Right. So if we put on, so that's telling me all the tarmac stuff, but I actually want the view information. So I need debug so I can see that it is moving. Um, and I think all of that, oh, I've got viewer. I can put resin world on. Let's put um, viewer on as well. They're basically uh, binary numbers, which is why you can, and that is um, binary or log logical or not like when you say, is this bigger than that or is, so you, it's not that, it's actually merging the two um, things together. So let's put debug dot view position. So viewer. Okay, so we should see, right, so you can see that the world is 880 wide and 520 high. I don't know where the viewer information is. Where, there it is. Um, right, if you want to be able to scroll further, 
in the engine. Um, so when we set that, we can actually say engine manager dot view uh, dot clamp equals false. Sometimes you want to do this. So if we do that, we take it, we're taking the clamps off, and actually now I can just keep going. So the time that stops rendering, it's quite weird that when you get the white on the white. You can do weird special effects by doing things like that. You could do like a white white bar or something if you scrolled like one simple time up across. Yeah, so it's not clamping now. I'm not doing up and down because I didn't bother putting any up and down keys, but obviously that works exactly the same. Okay. But in reality, you wouldn't want to scroll the time map as is. Um, if you want to change the size, it's going to be these numbers. So let's say I make these tiles uh, 100 by 100, but I don't change the graphics. So I want to show you what that looks like. So I'm saying for each one of these tiles, they're actually just a graphic that's 40 wide um, and 40 tall. But I'm saying to the game engine, each one of these tiles is 100. So let me just show you the effect. You can actually mess about with that dynamically. Change the tile sizes. But you'll get that. So actually what's happening is this whole area in that top left hand corner, which is like transparent, there's like a court, uh, three blocks of transparency. They're actually the tile. And if we look, if I can keep the, the white bit on top of the, because I made the background grey, didn't I? Um, you can see that the world is now, uh, what is it? 2,200 by 1,300. But obviously, when you start doing your collision detection, uh, the tile is the old area. If you go the other way and end up with a graphic bigger than your tiles, you'll get a weird effect as well. Might not see it so well on this. <laughs> so what, what's happened, each tile I've said is 10 by 10. So that's where they're getting positioned. So what the game engine is doing is drawing those tile graphics, but the tile graphics are 40 wide. So they're overlapping each other. Again, you can get weird special effects that you can do for that, um, to do that. Right, but that's the basics of just setting the tile map up. So all these tiles that we create down here, you can just, what I always say to the students is, don't worry about the graphics yet, just get other dummies in there. Just use the colours so you know what the colours represent. Uh, and then you can lay out your map. So you can start exploring with what it looks like. Once you're a bit happier, then you can, all you've got to do is switch these lines out for some textures that you've created. Okay, so for instance, if I wanted, let's um, let's make these 32 by 32, and I'll change the textures. Now, I'm doing all this. I'm putting 40s everywhere, but actually, uh, after I've defined this, I, what I ought to do really is create a couple of um, values, or or actually here, I can just say what is the tile width. So I can say uh, tile width because it knows and i can replace all those horizontal widths with that and then i don't have to edit that again and i can do tile height and then put those in there if i can select it properly oh, don't be stupid. i've broken something somewhere but i can't see what have I done? Oh, I deleted the... Um, God, that was hard to spot. Deleted the parentheses. Huh? Cool. Yeah. So when I change the... And you can see it automatically. So if I make that now 10... It'll automatically set those dummy tiles to the right size. So it should just be like a minimap. And it's dead easy to make a minimap. I built a system to do it. You give it a tile map. 
and it like goes right okay then i'll how much do you want to shrink it by and it gives you another time map that you can move and if you do a, a live link you can like update it and things like that um right so yeah if i want to change that to be a different graphic all i've got to do and i'll just use a different texture that's defined i'll use the circle 32 by 32 for some of them let's do it for the geezer let's put the rectangle back so this might make it easier for me to um pick up my dummy sprite locations to start with okay interest why is it gone gray yeah which has got transparency yeah so it might be that what you say well, you know what that looks a bit awful let's make the background black and then you won't see that it doesn't matter because you're just doing layout tests but this this is important it's it's, it's really important that you don't try and do everything all at once because you can't you've got to do like one little element get that working right that works it's rendering my background you can do all the graphics for it and then you can say right okay so let's instead of um did i not change that then interesting oh i've changed the debug attributes you got to really concentrate eric you really got to concentrate background color wherever i set that did i not set the background color Oh, don't think I did. <laughs> oh, I didn't. So, try and get into the habit of thinking, right, well, I've changed all these settings. I need to make sure when I go back to another mode, I've reset all these settings. Right, that's that. Yeah, that's better. So then you can't see that, but not that it mattered, to be fair, for that. Okay, so it's automatically scaled them. Um, it won't be able to go above what they were but at least it can do if i did that 16 by 16 we'd end up with like quarters for those two circles okay right i'll stop that there